Hey everybody, I thought since Earth Day is coming up, I guess it would be Wednesday, that we would do something a little different and make a flyer using Google Slides. So follow along with me here, and as I do the steps, if you can't keep up, which is normal, just pause, and when you get the step done, play again, and at the end I'll have you turn it in. It may seem kind of weird to use Google Slides for it, because you might think Google Docs would be better, but I'm going to show you some tricks that will make it pretty apparent that Google Slides is the best way to go for doing slides and layouts and things like that. So this is a little preview of what we're going to shoot for. What we're going to make is probably not going to look exactly like this. And that's okay. Um, so what I want you to do is start with a new blank presentation for your Google Slides. And when we start out, you can see it looks a lot like PowerPoint or any other um, presentation program. But we're going to turn it into a um, desktop publishing type platform. So the first thing I want to do here is go to File and Page Setup. And instead of doing widescreen, because we're going to do it on a piece of paper, I'm going to go to Custom. And then make sure it's on inches, and we're going to do 8.5 for the width and 11 for the height. That's a standard sheet of paper in the United States. So then we'll do apply. Now we need to get rid of this placeholder junk here. And we're also going to set a background that uh, you can't click on. And that'll make more sense here in a second. So now what I'm going to do is go up here to slide slide and go to change or uh, edit master and then the first layout that I want to mess with or the only layout I'm gonna mess with is this one here that says um, click to edit master uh, title slide and then if, as long as you're on that one you go over here to the right side and I'm gonna click on this box to get it highlighted and then make sure that you've got the four headed arrow on the edge of the box and you click and press delete on the keyboard and that'll get rid of the placeholder or you can also click and hold and drag around everything that's actually a little easier but some people have trouble clicking and dragging so uh, if you have to do it one at a time do it that way but if you click and drag and then press delete on your keyboard it'll go away Okay, so now we've got a blank slate, more or less, which is what we wanted. So let's put our background image in there. And you can see the one that I was um, messing around with to kind of give you an idea of what it was going to look like. We had this earth in the background. So I'm just going to go to uh, insert image and search the web. Okay, and when I do that, You'll get this little bar that pops up over here on the side. And I'm just going to type Earth. And there's a bunch of these. I think the one I did was, was this one. But um, it doesn't really matter to me which one you do. As long as you go through um, the steps I'm going to show you to make it fit on the page. So let's see. I'm just going to go with the same one that I did. So I'll click it one time. And then you have to go down here to the bottom and click insert and here it comes and you can see that it does not fit the page which is fine so I'm gonna uh, stretch it out a little bit so it starts to fit okay so now it's almost bigger than the page alright now right now I can't see what the underlying page looks like and that's not good so in order to make it so I can see where the actual page is I'm gonna right click on this image I'm gonna go to format options and we're gonna change what's called the transparency meaning that it'll be kinda see-through so I can see where my canvas is underneath to do that I'm gonna go over here to adjustments and transparency and I'm gonna crank this up a little higher than what I actually want to leave it just so we can see the canvas really well. I'll put it about 50%. Now you can see our piece of paper underneath. Okay. 
and I'm going to click the image and just move it over till it's centered on the page. Now these areas hanging over the side, we're going to crop them or uh, get rid of those areas. So to crop the image, make sure it's still selected. And then I'm going to click this crop box right here, crop image. Now, this is one part of Google Slides that I don't like, is whenever you turn on the crop um, bars, see the little bars, little black bars aren't there unless you're in crop mode, you can still accidentally hit the resize handles for the image itself, and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go on the left side here and move over ever so slightly until it turns into the two-way arrow pointing left and right and just make sure it's barely on there and then when I move this over it will crop to the, the image instead of resizing the image see and now uh, it didn't resize the image this is going to be chopped off whenever I um, hit enter and then I'll do the same thing on the right side I'll start about right here move in real slow until we get the two headed arrow barely going left and right if you go too far, it gets this little node on the side, and it's going to resize the image instead of cropping it. Okay, so we've got that cropped. Now let's do the top. Same thing. Start below this top one. Move up real slow. Whenever we get the up and down arrow, drag it down. And the last thing right here. Same kind of deal. Now this looks like a perfect crop to me. So I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard, okay, and that's going to crop away the extra parts of the image that we don't want. Now I'm going to see if that image is still in there in its entirety. I'm going to click crop image. Yeah, it is. So I'm not entirely used to Google Slides, so I just had to try that for myself. But if you want to go back and do a different crop, it doesn't actually delete the image. So that's a good thing. You just hit the crop again and you can make your changes. Now, oops, I didn't mean to click off. I'm gonna go back to my adjustments and we'll turn the transparency to zero, which means it's no longer see-through. Now, I want to uh, darken this up a little bit so that the text shows up a little better because right now, if you did it, there's white in here and um, it looks a little weird. So now I'm gonna go to insert and shape and shape again and we're going to do a rectangle okay and I'm just going to draw it on the entire surface of the page like that and right now you can see the background is white but we want to get a little fancy with it I'm going to go up here with the rectangle selected and you got the little fill color box it looks like a paint bucket tilt it over uh, we have to click the box and then go to gradient sorry then we'll go to custom there we go because we have to do a custom gradient not a custom color and what a gradient is it's a fade from one color to another and the gradient that's in here right now is simply a fade from gray uh, to darker gray and that's not what I want so I'm gonna click this first color box here on the gradient line Hit the drop down and the important thing is we're going to click transparent because I want this to be mostly see-through okay and then we'll click this one on the right side and it's this dark gray I want to turn it straight black so we're going from transparent which is see-through to straight black and I'll just click OK for now and we can see what it did it darkened everything up somewhat which is what we wanted and you always have the option of going in right here um, actually you don't on this I was going to show you you could do your transparency but that's okay alright so now we've got our uh, rectangle in here uh, to darken this up a little and as a matter of fact I am going to go in here and let's hit the paint bucket again and click custom again so it'll bring this back up and the way we can lighten this up some is instead of 
uh, having just transparent here and black here because I don't want it to be so strong I'm gonna hit click on the transparent gradio uh, gradient stop and hit add and then it's gonna put us a new stop in the middle that we can recolor and I'll make this transparent as well and this is how we can lighten it up somewhat just like that okay move it like that and if yours doesn't look exactly like mine that's okay it's perfectly fine see now it's a little bit lighter uh, it doesn't get super dark till it gets toward the bottom now we've done all of this in the master slide or slide master of what however Google slides calls it um, so now we got to get out of the slide master and to do that I am going to let's see we go to view and we uncheck master and that gets us out of slide master view there may be another way to do it but that's how I figured out how to do it in Google slide so now we have our one slide here and check it out I can click all over this thing it doesn't move the earth or the gradient rectangle that we added okay and that's what we wanted we wanted a, a canvas with our background that's not going to get messed up so now I'm going to go to insert and word art insert word art and I'm gonna type Earth Day okay and then um, I'll hit enter and this is gonna give us a very plain looking uh, bit of text this is Earth Day okay and I want to change the font from Arial to Pacifico and there's Pacifico I chose it because it looks a little bit more hand drawn a little more earthy and then we'll go here and turn on a drop shadow and I'm gonna go in here and make the drop shadow a little bigger so that Earth Day stands out now I'm going to make a copy of this Earth Day 20 or this Earth Day here and I'm going to move my mouse over the edge of the word art right here so you got the four headed arrow I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and then click while it's still the four headed arrow and drag down that makes a perfect copy of this Earth Day box okay now what I'm going to do is put the uh, date of this year's Earth Day so I'll double click on the second copy and I'll put in April 22nd 2020 and hit enter it's a little big so the way I'm gonna deal with that is just gonna get a hold of it on the corner and make it smaller because I don't want it to be so huge okay and you can actually move these edges until they snap to let you know that it's the perfect size so let me get this one over here and see if it'll give us the red line to let us know nope it doesn't actually give a red line on the right side but that's okay I'll just move this so that it is lined up with the middle of the document and you know that's the case because you get the red line I'll just move this in some so it's not outside of the uh, edge of the Y okay so there's my Earth Day April 22nd 2020 and then the last part we're gonna add a 50th anniversary so we'll insert and do another word art fiftieth anniversary okay and then I'll just move it down into this part okay and then um, let's go put a fill on it I didn't do this one in the one I was messing around with so this will be a little different but um, let's try kind of this light green fill here light green one it's called okay and then we'll put a drop shadow on it and I don't want the drop shadow to be black I'm going to go with this yellow and we will 
make the blur radius a little higher and that's going to make it kind of a uh, a thicker drop shadow of yellow so it looks like it's glowing make sure that you go up to the top here and save it as last name comma first name earth day presentation or flyer and that way whenever you go to find it to attach it to the assignment it'll be there okay and that ladies and gentlemen is how we created a very simple Earth Day flyer so I want you guys to turn yours in that you were able to create by following along if you were not participating whenever I was going through it go back through and do the steps again everybody have a good one